Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to um, learn more about the power of three. We've got the beautiful Rosie with us. She's a diamond leader with doTERRA and I met her at a diamond day training that we had in Byron Bay recently and uh, Rosie's built her team around the power of three. Now this is really a really popular way in America and in Australia, a lot of people build more for rank advancement, which is what we've done. So we, of course, wanted to learn much more about the power of three and embody that, I guess, um, training into your life. And then we can all make a decision on how we want to run our business, whether we do want to build for power of three or whether we do want to build for rank advancement. And we were saying just before we hit record is that there's no correct way in doing it. You need to run your business how you want to run your business. So if we can give you all the training on the power of three and then training on rank advancement, then you can make the decision on which way you want to go. And we don't believe there is a wrong way or a right way. So um, yeah, we're pretty excited to talk to Rosie today and learn more about this information. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you guys. I'm very excited to be here. I'm actually... Um Power of Three is something I'm quite passionate about. Um, just through my journey with doTERRA and through the business, it's just worked so well for me um, and so well for for the girls in my business. Um, so I'm really passionate about it. And I'm really excited to share it with you. Just heads up, I've got my four-month-old with me, the joys of working at home um, with babies. So I apologise if there's any baby interruptions. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> That's um, okay. about doTERRA though is it is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, so I'm just going to flick to my PowerPoint. Um, so I'll just screen share that with you now. Can you guys see that? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Right. So I'll just go over it just so everyone's got a bit of a background. Okay. So the power of three, it's part of the compensation plan with doTERRA. So it's based on you and people. It's based on how you structured and the people underneath you doing a hundred PV LRPs. So not just that, but you, your hundred PV LRPs plus your entire front line, uh, adding up to a total volume of 600 PV. So this can mean that you might have three people on your front line doing the 100 PVs and then you might have another three people that do sort of random random orders or they're not 100 PV customers, but their volume adds up to the total, the 600 volume, so that it secures you your, your first level power of three. And then that duplicates down for your 50 and then that duplicates um, down again for your 1500 power of three. So this is based on structure. It's based on having people on those first three levels. Um, and my understanding of it is by doing it this way, um, it really, really um, utilises the uni level, um, the uni level payment. So your uni level bonus, I'm sure you're familiar with this, is based, you get the percentage paid on people underneath you. So uh, first level 2% all the way down to your seventh level 7%. And that's not seven physical levels, that's seven active levels. So seven mm -hmm. active um, 100 mm -hmm. PV levels, that's, that's where the uni level gets paid. Um, but it's designed so that you've got minimal amount of people at the top and then lots of people happening down the bottom. And I'm actually going to share with you what my levels look like um, so that you can see how that it, how it's worked for me um, and how it's currently growing with, with, um, with the Power of Three structure and why my uni level is so solid. Um, so... Next slide is... So you can see with the ranks with doTERRA, the income-wise, um, this is off the Share Success um, website, these slides. So the income-wise, it's designed so that in the early days when we're building, our fast start is our fast. It's designed, to, it's called fast start to give you a fast start. It's a quick injection of money to to give you the money to, to launch your business. And then the second, the second part of your income that is, the big chunk of it, the big percentage of it, um, is designed to come from your power of three in those early days. It doesn't really start to get 
to your uni level doesn't really start to kick in and become a big chunk of it until you're hitting the platinum diamond levels. Um, and then obviously when you get to the higher levels, the uni level is the big chunk, but then there's the leadership pools, um, which are really awesome. And at that stage, your fast start and your power of three is designed to be the minimal, um, the minimal part of your your income, um, because as you're getting to those high levels, you're focusing more on leadership and training. Um, and while you're still enrolling, it's not a primary, um, generally not a primary part of your business, according to. Well, this is according to the way that I've sort of learnt, which is um, from from the leaders in DoTerra. So, just a little bit about me and my story and how how this sort of came about for me. So I sort of didn't really have any guidance on placements or anything when I first started. I was just trying to figure stuff out myself. Um, oh, hang on, go through that. So this was me, right? So when I first started, I didn't really know what I was doing. So I just put heaps of people on my front line. I just had front line people everywhere. Um, and then I started, so I looked at, I learned from doTERRA. I went to the doTERRA website and I was like, okay, Power of three, this is what people do. This is like how you get your structure. So I had heaps of people on my front line and then I loaded up all their front lines and then taught them pretty much to do the same thing. So my first, second and third levels were all on building power of three. So instead of me building three legs to get initially, I built five. So by the time I was silver, I had five elites sitting on my front line. Um, so I had a lot of volume outside of where I needed it to be and I still now have a really high volume in my team um, and because I had this volume outside, obviously it took me longer to rank than what um, what it does other people when you put that volume underneath the legs that you actually need it to rank. However, I had my two, by the time I was silver, I very, very comfortably had my 250 power of three. Um, so that's the purple level there, so my second level, which means that a minimum of three of my leaders had their 50. I'm pretty sure actually all five of them um, at that time had their, had their 50. And then working on my 1500, it was a little bit harder. It's definitely not something that I focused on, but it was something that I always kept my eye on um, just to see when it was sort of coming up. And so getting I was training my leaders I basically trained everyone to get their 50 and by doing that it just duplicated down into the 250 and then the 1500 so I had my 1500 I got my first 1500 um, the last month that I was gold and I've maintained it ever since so um, question on that have I ever had to invest into it in order to get it the answer is yes um, I have had to invest into it, so that means, yes, have I gone into people's accounts and have I increased their orders in order for me to qualify? Yes, I have, and I would do it again in a heartbeat because this is a business. And if I need to invest two or $300 in order to make $2,000, I'm going to do it. Um, so I, I did do that in the early days. Now, very, very organically, um, I get my 1500. I actually get my second 250 up to my second 250 power of three because I started building my sixth leg. Because I know what I'm doing now, I've built that, like that structure's gone really well. Um, but so I've got my second um, 250 and this month will be the first month that I qualify for my second 1500 as well. Um, so have I had to invest in that? Yes, again, I have, um, but I do, I like even with my first fifteen hundred, I didn't need to invest in it for a long period before it started happening organically itself, um, and it really helped my leaders having their them having their two fifty as well. And now my golds are all pretty much working on their on their fifteen hundred. The golds of mine that that aren't. Um, are the ones that did the stacking. So they built in the in the in the rows, the up and down straight line rows, um, and they're the ones that are not really getting their power of three um, because they've got their people doing their orders on like all different levels. Um, yep. So that's how I built. That's how my power of threes worked for me. So your fifteen hundred power of three equates to yeah. roughly two thousand Australian dollars. Um, so give or take some month, that's, that's what it is. Um, so when I was doing, because I went to this training when I was silver and learn about the building down and I was like, oh my God, I've completely stuffed up, stuffed my whole business up. I need to be building a different way. 
But I already had my 250 at that point and I could see my sort of 1500 emerging. And when I started to build down, I had it because I'm like, we have a really high retention rate and everyone just seems to go, well, not everyone, but a very high percentage of our team goes on LRP. So every time those LRPs were happening on my level, like on the levels that I built down, um, I was looking at that and I was like, oh, far out. If I just had built those three people up and kept them on that, that level then I'd be pretty much getting my 1500 and I wouldn't even have to be investing in it so I just kept an eye on that and then I did some sums so my 1500 power of three includes um, 56 people ordering so ideally if it's perfect and everyone's the perfect structure is 27 people doing 150 and that will get you your power of three um, 150 PV orders. So, but my 1500 power of three includes 56 people doing orders. So that's all the people doing the 100 PVs plus extra people that are in there doing higher or higher or lower orders. Maybe not, maybe not the 100, but their volume is adding up to to create that 1600 volume, which then gives me my 15 power of three. So I wanted to figure out how much how many people it would take me to earn that same amount of money on my seventh level based on earning it from the uni level. So 285 people doing 100 PV orders on my seventh level, that equals $1,995, which is the same amount that you get from your 1500 power of three. So when I figured that out, I was looking at 56 people or you know even 60 people versus 285 people to get the same amount of money. And I was like, Oh, far out well it just seems easier to work on like having those smaller amount of people up a little bit higher to get the money so for me it's I just look at it it's just such easy money <laughs> it's really really easy money um, by not going like so deep and keeping the levels up the top and the way that that has now worked um, in the long run for me is like the um, like the compensation plan, how it's got, you know, level five and level six with those with those numbers of people on it. So all up, I think on my seventh level or my sixth and seventh level, I think I've probably placed maybe maybe five or six people on those levels on my tree. And so now for me, um, this is what my team looks like now. So over in the grey. So I don't I've got people that I need to place. They're sitting on my front line. <coughs> but so I've really only placed on my second, third, I've placed a few on my fourth. I've placed maybe a couple on my fifth. <clears throat> Definitely not down too low because I want access to that uni level. Um, <clears throat> so you can see my fifth level's got 743. My sixth level's got 765. Because I've put so many people at the top, when they're enrolling people, it's just naturally making those lower levels for me really, really full with people that are ordering so I'm getting that income and then <clears throat> my seventh level you can see it's still filling in because like I've still got builders they're still building so it's still filling in um, so my sixth level is still like you know they're still enrolling people so it's still that's still got a lot more growth to go before that I'm getting that really really big return from that but still so my team total as of today is 3,500 people and the team that are in my uni level is 3,224 people so I'm capitalizing <coughs> financially from every single one of those people almost every single one of those people that are putting orders in um, for my team so my uni level income each month is huge it's massive um, but I mean, that's what it's designed to be. So my fast start isn't huge, um, but my uni level is. So I don't enrol a huge amount of people each month. So if I have a really good month, I might enrol like eight people, a quiet month, about three. Um, <clears throat> just recently I've been on maternity leave with, um, with Jazz and there was one month I didn't enrol anybody. Um, and I maintained rank and I got paid like ridiculously good money, um, which is the beauty of this. It's designed to be not only financial freedom, but lifestyle freedom as well, so that you can still earn that money um, while, while, you know, while I can take time off to have my baby and then, you know, come back and, and start to, you know, go again and, and continue to increase it. So this is why I stopped 
I'm just going to show you a shot out of my team. So one of my golds, this gold is actually on my third level. And another thing too, when I was placing initially, I'll just go back because I placed so many people on my first and second levels underneath all of these builders. It was only a matter of time before my leaders popped up from my personally enrolled leaders popped up. So mm -hmm. all of my leaders, every single one of them is either on my first or second level. I've got four on my first and I've got two on my, no, actually, yeah, I've got two on my second. So because I because I kept them all up the front when I was in, initially enrolling, now they're all up the front, which obviously has helped with my power of three structure, but it's also massively helping with my uni level as well. Um, and the same thing's happening for all of them. So because because they've got their leaders up on their front level um, or their second level, it's really, really capitalising on their uni level. However, some of my girls that built differently have had different experience with that. So this is, this is where it sort of went. This is where I sort of realised the effect of it. So you see up the top, this is one of my golds. She's on, she's not, um, I don't rank off her, she's one of my leader's golds, but... Um, so she is on my third level. So there's all these people in between. So then over here to the far right, she taught a class and she stacked all these. All It's a group of friends. So that row of girls there down to the premiere, she's soon to go silver, but down to the premiere, um, she, it was a group of friends um, and they all know each other. So the girls on top that are ranked elite, um, they're not doing any building, um, but obviously the premiere is down the bottom. So... Right now, the only uni level I have access to from that premiere is the premiere's order. That's it. I don't have access to any of that other uni level underneath her because the girls at the top, because of the 100 PV orders that are going in from the girls at the top. So these girls at the top now, these two elites, they are really good friends with this premiere and they want to be on her team. But because of the way they were stacked, there's always going to be someone on top of the other. There's always going to be someone that isn't part of someone else's team, whether you build for power of three or whether you build in straight lines. There's always going to be someone that's not part of someone else's team. So now these girls, they really want to be on this premier's team. Um, so they're talking about going inactive for six months and then transferring underneath her because that's where they want to be. They want to be with their friend. They want to help her. And by her, by them moving down there, they're going to help her with her power of three structure as well. She's going to get her 250 this month as well. Um, so, I mean, which when that happens, excited it'll move up and there'll be a little bit more uni level there that we can capitalise on. Um, but when I look at that, I just think for the purpose of like... To me, when I look at that, it was just because that's happened to me twice. I've got two builders on my lower levels that I don't have any access to their uni level. And when I look at how much my uni level is and I look at that and I think if those other, like, I'm losing, you know, maybe a couple of hundred of dollars based on two people's or three people's orders that are like 100 PV orders and because those orders are going in financially, I'm missing out on all this capital underneath and I'm just, I look at that and I'm just like, ah, that can happen later, not now, not now while I'm trying to like, you know, establish my establish my business and get it all into into like a really thick, solid um, unit type thing. So, yeah, so that's happened to me twice and when that happened I was just like, you know what, I'm not this, I know, it's, I know that the building up and down works for some people um, and I know that a lot of people have done it um, really successfully and I know that their businesses are really successful from it and there's like, there's no, as Joe said at the beginning, there's no right or wrong way to do this, there's just different and for me, the power of three has worked, it's worked really well and that's how I build and that's how I train. I don't fully understand the whole building on top of each other, I don't understand how it works, I don't understand how to capitalise on it. Um, from a financial from a financial business building point of view. So I guess maybe if I understood that a bit better, then maybe I might, you know, change things that I'm doing as well. But um, I was talking to another lady, she's a blue diamond, when um, Joe and I were at the Diamond Day or the Diamond event um, at the beginning of the month and I was talking to her about it and we both sort of came to the consensus that both ways work and, and combining the two 
would be fantastic. So for me now, I've built like that and I've got a lot of structure up the top of my tree and it's really thick and solid. But now I need to look at placing people to capitalise on rank because as the uni level show, as the like um, the image of the income shows, once you're getting up to like the blue diamond ranks and stuff like that, those leadership pools are huge. So mm-hmm. using my enrolments for people that are going to build and putting them under putting them underneath leaders so that I've got volume in certain places to ensure that they're going to rank is a really smart thing for me to do. Um, and in the meantime, I don't have to worry about filling in my uni level now because I've got so many active builders. They're doing that all for me. So now I can take my enrolments and I go, okay, where do I need, where are the ranks happening? And I place them there. Mm, yeah. um, can I so, ask a question? Yeah. Um, I hope this is okay. Um, so to get, so you obviously, how long did it take you to achieve diamond rank? 17 Or months. even silver? Silver, it took me five months. Okay. Um, silver, it took me five months. And then I went from silver to gold, took me six months. And then I rank advanced every three months after that. So I went gold, three months later, I went platinum. Three months later, I went diamond. And I've maintained diamond every single month except for one. I dropped it in January. Um, and apart from that, every single month I've maintained it and I've never had to buy in for my rank ever. Yeah. So that's, I'm just trying to compare because obviously, um, you know, we want to give everyone, like that's no different to any, I think if you're building for rank advancement, I think that's sort of not much different to compare. It's like, I think to be honest, it comes down to how much people want to work. Yeah. So yeah. I've yeah. worked. I worked really hard, like those early days. Like I didn't have a network before I started this, so I was travelling and teaching and doing a lot of classes and consistently showing up and and doing them. Um, And that's why I got to Diamond in 17 months. It wasn't because it wasn't because of any other reason. It was because I worked. Yeah, which is the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you're prepared to put in the effort, I think regardless of how you're building, just to give everyone a bit of a you know a, a sum up regardless of how you're building whether it's for rank advancement or for power of three i think you still have to put in the work you still have to put in the effort but time frame it probably still works out the same and based on what i think i've just heard you say and correct me if i'm wrong money wise so people build for this is totally my understanding we've built for rank advancement because it allowed us an income quicker yep. however i think what i've just heard you say is you've built for power of three but you still were getting that same payment because of all those uni level payments. So yeah. money wise, it's probably still the same regardless of how you're building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've I've looked at a few leaders that have shared sort of their incomes um, in some Facebook groups and stuff like that. And I've looked at them and I've gone, well, I'm still earning the same amount of money that they are. Like the only difference is where my income's coming from. So a lot of their income is fast start income. Um mm-hmm. And whereas my fast start isn't high, um, which like works out well for me. Um, but my uni level is really, really high, whereas their uni level is a little bit lower. So it's still sort of, to be honest, it's still, from what I've seen, like I've only seen a couple, I don't know what everyone earns, but um, from what I've seen, we're all sort of still earning similar amounts of money, um, but it's just the, where the money's coming from in the compensation plan is just different. And so, like my understanding as well is obviously if you've got it all down in uni level, that's far more sustainable than having to be like, so you've just had a baby. So like you just mentioned, you know, you've dropped right back on your recruiting, you know, signing people up and registering people and things like that and hosting all these events and stuff. So you, in one way, you, you and correct me if I'm wrong again, saying you don't have to work as hard to get your money because it's residual income now because you've built these really solid structures in your uni level because of all the power of threes that are filtered down. Whereas if you're building for rank advancement and this, and like I'll disclose it and Joe might shoot me down, but sometimes we are worried that someone up the top here isn't going to put an order in and then we're pretty much like, unless we buy in ourselves because... Rosie said advantage. that she's had to invest in her business. So that's no different in my eyes. Is you yeah, invest true. in the power three or invest yeah, yeah, yeah. in the Definitely. So, so, I think, so I think that's it's really important to talk about, to be honest, because not enough people talk about it. And I think yeah. 
the business, we need to invest in our businesses. And it doesn't mean that your business is better or worse than anyone else's. It means that you're a smart business person, basically. Yeah, yeah. And that's and right. We need to buy in to a power of three person to build, to get to that rank. Then it's no different than like investing in your business. You're exactly right. It's a really good way of putting it. I love that. So yeah, yeah. you said you have a team of about three and a half thousand. So people need to keep that in mind as well, that she's got three and a half thousand people in her team in order to earn as much as the next diamond. So, yeah. you know, we have a thousand and forty nine people in our team. So obviously our uni level is not going to be as high as you because we've got a third of the people that you do. So yeah, yeah. we've built a diamond with a third of the people that you have. So that's where uni um, building for rank advancement and building for power three is different as well. So I just don't want people to feel like there's a right way and there's a wrong way. It's just the way that you do it. Um, which is really exactly. important to remember. So I've got a couple of, I'm going to bring my wife. Can I just ask another question before you move on, Joe, to something else? Yeah. Can I, and again, if you don't want to answer, then just say no, I don't want to answer that. But do you ever have to gift people? Like, so we sometimes have to gift people. And again, this is probably more advanced training. This, That's this, because people aren't enrolling. Yeah, because we're building for rank advancement. But have you ever had to gift someone to then be able to still meet your rank? Occasionally, but... Like I've probably only done it in all of my legs. I think I've done it once in all of my legs. So I've gifted one person. Um, whereas, yeah, like I've, leg. do you mean yeah, all one so person in order, for, in order for in order for my leaders to rank to be the rank that I guess I need them at, I've gifted one person <laughs> per, and they've got their other leaders and their other builders themselves. Yeah, which is but interesting. Again, I know I feel like I'm saying the wrong thing but that's hard to compare she's got three thousand people we've got one and we're building for rank advancement and rosie how many builders do you have in your team um active i've got i've got about 27 yeah mm. see we've only got about yeah i'm not comparing it to us joe at all i'm just comparing it to overall like i just wanted to know the like when, I, when i went diamond so when I went diamond, I had, um, I think I had about 1,300 people on my team when I went diamond. So that was initially when I ranked. And my first diamond pay, so my uni level pay, not including my fast start, my first diamond pay was $11,900. Hmm. And that was, that was the very first one that I got. Um, that included my power of three as well. Um, and now... It's like, so my uni level, again, not my fast start. So my uni level pay now as a diamond, um, and that includes my second 250 power of three, is like between 16 and a half and 17 and a half generally. Mm. Um, each. And I that, think it's really interesting for everyone to understand, you know, not, not yeah, not comparing businesses. It's just, it's just the questions I have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just different. And I think it's so important to, like... I said, like, like I said, the fit. Like I looked at another diamond's figures that she put up, and she earns the same money. It's exactly the same money, but it's just from different area. It's utilizing different areas of the compensation mm. plan. Um, mm. So I utilize the way I've built utilizes more of the uni level as opposed to like the other bonuses, um, and the way other people build utilizes the bonuses, um, and then the uni level sort of fills in later. It's not right or wrong. It's just mm. different. And at the end of the day, everyone's having success and everyone is earning fantastic income from it. And I think that's awesome. Yeah, same. I love it. I've, I've found it really interesting. So, yeah, that's good. So I just wanted to ask, I've got the whiteboard because I want to talk about how you do it. So you've sort of given us an idea on money and you've done it this way. But I'm like for people that are just learning, even I'm a little bit confused. So I know it's yep. going to be really confusing for them. So you've got you up here. Right. Yep. So you said you built 16. Oh, no. So I built initially, I built about, I, I think I had about seven initially on my front line. Let's see if I can get closer. Can you see that better? Yep. <laughs> a bit blurry. Focus. Not focusing. No, take it back. <laughs> oh, you might just stand in front of it for a minute. Let it focus. Yeah. Yes. But you said you had six on the top row. 
Yeah, six or seven I had. That were on the 100 LRP. Uh, five of them were doing hundreds and the other ones were sort of just random. Just, yeah, okay. A couple I actually forgot to move. I know that sounds really bad, but it happened. Oh, God, we didn't even know what movements were when we first started, so we've got people everywhere. <laughs> so, okay, so I want to get this straight. So you get some enrolments. So let's say you get, I don't know, you host your first ever workshop and you get four enrolments. So what we do with rank advancement is we teach them to move under, right? But you're yep. but for building for power three is you leave them there. Um, well, it depends. If it was, if it was again, like to, I take the relationships into consideration as well. So say if it was one person that hosted the workshop, I would put the person that hosted the workshop on my front line, and then I would put everyone else that was at that workshop on her front line. Ah, yep. gotcha. Yeah. yeah, well, that, yeah. okay, because you do that for whoever whoever um, invites the person to the workshop gets those enrolments, so. Yeah, yeah but yeah. in their front so, line, Jo, what we do is build straight down. So um, Rosie said she puts them across in the front line, not yeah. builds them underneath. If there were 14 people, I wouldn't put 14 people on someone's front line. Yeah. I'd, so I'd talk to the person that hosted the class and I'd say, okay, of all the people that are enrolled, what, where are people at? What are they at lifestyle-wise? So I, I, will, I will source out who is most likely to do orders. And I'll pick, like, so I'll get five of those people, like, you know, ask the questions. Are they, you know, are they sisters? Because I'm not going to put sisters side by side. I'm going to put them one on top of the other. Um, so I'll figure out who's going to be, where the relationships are, who's going to be most likely to order, because I want people to have the power of three, because then that's half their oils paid for each month. Mm. So, and then by... Seriously, like just getting people their 50, they never drop their hundreds. Like they mm. never drop just mm. because they get so much of it for free. Um, so, yeah, so I'll put, say about, so if there was a class and there was 14 enrolments, I'd put, say, five people on their front line, um, depending on what feedback I got from them. I'd say, okay, you leave those five people there and then if there's two sisters, right, you need to put one sister on top, like underneath the other sister and then who's over here and who's over here and, you know, if they work together, blah, blah, blah. But then I would go on their front lines. So I go horizontally. I don't go vertically. So yeah. I still move the people but it's moving them so if you got, say, Joe, if you got those three people that are on the far right and you moved, say, put two of them on the front line, but one of them's a sister of one of those people, so then I put the sister underneath and I put the other one on the front line. And then I'd say, okay, let's have another workshop. So then she would have another workshop with a new circle of people and then those circle of people, I'd go, okay, who's going to order? So say five people enrolled from that. So then I might put three people from that workshop on their front line if they're not all connected if they're separate so then three people go on and then i'll then two people will go underneath them you know if it's a sister or an auntie or whatever of some of those people then they'll go underneath them right. um and so then from that point then uh, once there's about you know once they hit elite or or even before elite executive i'm pretty much making sure that they've when i'm working with them that they've got their 50. Okay, so um, I've got a question then. So let's say she's on 100 LRP. She's yep. on 100 LRP and then two of these guys are on 100. So let's say you host another workshop and you get four enrolments and then one of them's on LRP. Do you move yep. them down under here? Is that is that one person connected? Who's that one person? Is she connected to that leg? No, she's just someone you've enrolled. Well, if it, de it depends on what's going on with the rest of my tree. If I didn't have another leg, I'd start building another leg. So because I've already got volume in that leg over there. So if that was a different workshop, then I'd start building my second leg. And then I'd put, so I'd leave that person you've circled, I'd leave them on the front line and I'd put all those three on her front line. Yeah. That's what I do. Okay. So then you've got two on LRP. Yep. And you host another workshop and you get another four enrolments. You then put them under, like under again. Well, not if if one of them was going to be if. Yeah, look, I mean, I would if they're not connected, I would. I would have the three legs there, and I would, I would leave. I might even leave if I didn't have my fifty. I might even leave. A couple of other people on my front line so that I was securing my 50. 
Yeah. That's yeah. what I would do. Yeah, okay. So eventually, like, so if you have a few and then she's on LRP, like she's on LRP and you're getting a 50 vote, then she drops out and she drops out and you get another enrolment, do you put them there to build up your 50 again? Um, I've never, well, I guess I've never really had that happen. I've never really had people like, I've never had people drop off because all the people on either my front or my second are, have, because of the way I've built, they've got, you know, their power of three underneath them. So mm -hmm. they're not, they know if they don't put their order in, they're not going to get that income. So, so actually, no, one of my leaders has got that though. She's got that situation where sometimes this girl will put an LRP in and sometimes she won't. So yes, she has built and she's got a builder underneath that girl that's sometimes putting an LRP in and sometimes not. And But she built other legs. Yeah, okay. She built not, not full other legs, but she built like put someone else on her front line that was going to do her 100 LRP. Okay. okay. So if I build the perfect tree, sorry, Trace, I've just got one more question. So let's say we build. Well, there is no perfect tree, but if you build a tree. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make a perfect tree. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> just like the um, just like the compensation plan, it looks so easy. Yeah, the compensation plan tree. <laughs> uh, okay, so we've got our three. Um, so you're getting you're getting fifty, and you're getting two fifty. Then you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Three, one, two three. Okay. Okay, so you're getting your fifteen hundred. Yep. Now this girl's getting fifty dollars. This girl's getting fifty dollars. But these guys are getting nothing. So how with all these ones down here? How do you encourage them to put through an LRP because they've got no one under them because then they're, they're not getting anything? Because though, so I'm trying to, I'm pointing at my computer screen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see that. Yeah. So because you're like, I'm training for 50s. I'm training for people to create their 50s. So the people on my third level, they're not, they're not getting nothing. Like they've got something underneath them or to be honest, they're just educated and they love using the oils. Like I don't have an, an like, especially with the LLV now, bloody hell, that's just awesome. Um, like I don't have an issue with people not, not putting in when, as long as people are educated, like I don't know about you, but I struggle to keep my order under like 400 PV each month. Like I order so much stuff like the shampoo and conditioner and my husband and I take the supplements and then the oils. Like this, if people know how to live this lifestyle, I don't see 100 PV orders as an issue. And if anything does come up, like if some of them are, you know, going through, we've got, I've got one girl at the moment that she's just like, oh, I've just had some stuff come up financially and, you know, I've had to pull, I've had to pull back on my orders and I'm like, okay, right. Oh, well, it makes sense for me to spend a hundred bucks in order to get 2000. So I'm going to do that order for you. And she's like, oh, awesome. Does that mean that I'll keep my points? And that means I'll keep my percentage. I said, yeah. And you know, when you're ready, you can just pop your order back in. She said, you know, okay, I've only got a couple of months. I've just got to get through this. I've got this major I don't know, bill or whatever it was come through. And then I'm going to go back to order because I love the oils so much and I'm missing them already. And so I really like being able to order through her account because it means she's getting more points as well, which means like, which means like financially, I guess it's helping her as well because she can use those points to get, um, to get more free stuff. Yeah. So Okay. Yeah, I just, I, we're, my team, we just, we smash education. We're just so educate, 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 educate. And I've just found by really, really um, honing in on that, like, to be honest, and I know that, uh, that a lot of people may probably disagree with me on this one, um, I haven't really talked about the business a lot, ever. <laughs> um, I've really just been talking about the oils and how you use the oils and really just focusing on that because before I got into this I couldn't stand MLM companies I hated them I hated network marketing I hated everything to do with it because every time I went to one of those things and people talk about the business I was like oh 
can't you just talk about people? Can't you just stop talking about money? And like I get it now. I get that. And I, I have started talking about the business more now and the kind of income you've earned because it's changed my life and it's made so much stuff better for us. But initially, um, for me, it was all about the product and getting the product into people's lives. And I was just like, how can, and that's very connected to my why, but I was just like, how can I do more of that? How can I make sure that every single person is using these to their full potential? And so we just hammer education in a nice way. (laughs) But yeah, Yeah. it's educate, 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 educate. And I did a lot of my stuff on the ground as well. So I'm not as savvy as you girls tech wise. Um, So a lot of my stuff was, was on the ground and classes on the ground. And I think that really helped with, with a lot of like connection and, and people, I guess, learning how to do stuff because they'd take, physical bits of paper home after our classes and, you know, make up their little blends and blah, 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 blah. Um, but like, you know, that's just my story. That's just what works for me. And that's what's worked for my business. And I look at what you girls have done in the time frame you've done and, and how you're doing it and maintaining and everything like that. And I'm just like, oh, God, I need to learn how to do more of this stuff online. I need to learn how to utilize that more because it's, you know, it's very duplicable when you're doing it online and it makes it accessible by everybody. Um, you know, location's never never an issue. So I'm trying to learn more of that stuff at the moment um, so that I can take pressure off. Well, as my team's growing as well and we're getting into areas outside of our towns and stuff like that, and I need to be able to do it. So I am looking to more online resources to be able to do that. Um, but I think, yeah, in the early days, there was a lot of that... Um, that sort of on the ground work that I did, that's what I think has worked for me. But, you know, I'm just one diamond and that's just my story. We've all got Yeah, but that's what I think's great is that everyone can share if, if everyone was willing to share their stories, there'd be so much more choices for people. So, you know, we've only done what we know because that's what we learned through someone else. And then that's why like it's awesome that you've shared with us and and you know we can share this out within our communities because then, you know, our team, we're gonna go Oh, okay. That actually makes really good sense because we've got a lot of our team that are building on the ground exactly like what you just said that aren't utilising social media and different things to, you know, maybe to our extent because we had a social media thing going on before doTERRA. So our story is different again and your story is different and then a lot of our leaders are totally different to even what we're doing. So I think it's awesome that you've shared with us today and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Mm. Oh, thank you. It was a little, yeah. to be honest, it's been a little bit, and I expressed this at the diamond thing. It's been, it's been something I've been quite scared of because of just the general culture around it and the, and the lack of, um, the lack of accepting and, and the judgment about building in a certain way. Um, it has been, you know, it has been quite intimidating and I've, and I guess, you know, that's my own, I haven't had the confidence in myself to be able to do that. But now that I've, I know that I've done it and I've done it successfully and I know that they're like the girls on my team are doing it and they're all, you know, capitalising majorly on their powers of three. Um, and, yeah, so I, th- I guess that's giving me more confidence to talk about it now. But, you know, it is a big world and there's lots of leaders out there and it can be a little bit, oh, please don't shoot me down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I, yeah, I've learned a lot and it's definitely made me and Joe look at our business placements and, um, you know, placements of our people and stuff differently as well. And whilst we want to rank advance, which is one of our, you know, goals, it, like you said, it doesn't have to be that way either. Like you still rank advanced by building power of three and you're still earning the same amount of money like you just shared. So I think each way can be utilised and I don't think there's a right and wrong either, like, I think we need to get out all the information and learn both ways and then people can make up their own minds. Like we're smart people. We're running these businesses ourselves. We're not, you know, everyone can make up their own minds how they want to do it. But if we're not teaching them how to do it, then they're just going to follow what we've done. And I so yeah, so again, I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Not a problem. My pleasure. My pleasure. And like the way, just going back to Joe, what you were saying with you, with the whiteboard and stuff like that, the way that we approach stuff too is when we teach classes for people um, and and they're enrolling people, our goal for them is to get their, a lot of the times to get their 50. So they've got that 50. So their oils are covered each, well, at least half of them are covered each month. Um, and because that gets them excited when they've got mm-hmm. that that money coming mm-hmm. in. Like I remember like getting phone, like messages of phone calls of people and they're like, 
my God, there's like $70 in my AR balance and I didn't even do anything. What's that? What, what is that? And I said, you know how we talked about your, you know, your power of three and your little bit of uni level, like your $4 of uni level <laughs> that you've got? That's what that is. So now, you know, you only, you only have to put in 50 bucks each month towards your oils and you can get that. And they're like, oh, that's awesome. And I did that by just having one class and helping my friends and now they're using the oils. Oh, this is so cool. And, you know, it, a lot of the time that's that's just been enough to spark sort of interest in them to maybe want to earn a little bit more income. And I've, I've got a sharer on my team. She's not interested in this as a business at all, but she's enrolled. I think she's enrolled about five or six people, her, like just her close friends and stuff. She's put them all on her front line. I explained everything to her. She's put them all on her front line. They're all on LRP. She's getting a 50 and she had a business call her the other week and she's like, they want me to come in and do classes and she said, I just don't want to do it. She said, I'm really happy with what I've got. I'm really happy with my little power of three and half my oils each month. Can you just take care of them? She said, I just don't want to do that. I'm not interested. I don't want to do that kind of stuff. Can you just do it? I just and I, and I explained to her, I said, you know, you could get this and she's like, Rosie, I don't want to do this as a business. I'm happy with what I've got. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's just... You know, everyone's different and, you know, you've built in a way that's worked for you guys, which with your social media following and stuff like that makes a lot of sense. Um, and, you know, I've built a way that's worked for me and it's just understanding, like you said, that everyone's different. And when we know the different ways to do stuff, we can look at the different situations and go, okay, this is the way that worked for me. But given your circumstances, it might be better off for you to try this way. Mm. So I just got one more question um, with the... Because, or well, two actually, because I think at the end of the day, and we were talking about this in Byron, at the end of the day, it all we all work out the same because now we're in a situation where we've, I mean, we've always maintained diamonds since February, but, you know, our team's quite deep now. So now we're plugging up the $1,500 power of three. So we always get the $250 um, and now we're plugging up the the 1500 and you're plugging up your uni level so i think you get to a certain point where you we switch over kind of thing yeah. anyway yeah so yeah even yeah. whichever way you start we all end up in the same destination yeah. at Absolutely. the end and then i just want to ask about what you think about the wholesale customer because what we're going to do with the wholesale customers is plug up our um, fifteen hundred dollar power, fifteen hundred power of three. So, do you think that's a good idea to leave all your fifteen hundreds at the top, second and third, or build them down? For the, what do you like? Uh, you lost so me. That the wholesale customers that go on LRP. Um. Oh, I'm so excited about that. Like, so excited. I'm so strategically using all of that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll definitely be. And so what I've, I've done some training with my girls whenever it comes in. Um, but I've done some training with my girls about that. And I've said, okay, so strategically, once they enroll, place them, place them for your power of three, specifically for your power of three. Yeah. Um, and then um, to really solidify your power of three, but also to... Um, we're going to be doing something that, so we're going to work with them and educate them and do like the 90 day thing so that they're not, they don't, we're going to sort of encourage just education for the first 90 days. And then we're going to reassess and see where they're all at. So if we place people say on a lower level to rank one month for that, for that volume, but that person starts doing hundred PV orders after the 90 days, um, we're going to incentivize them to upgrade and then we're going to reposition them into like a power of three spot so i'll be looking at saying to them if you are happy to upgrade to a wellness advocate we'll give you a free bottle of frankincense mm -hmm. and we'll do that and move them and then upgrade them move them up into a better position um structure wise and like honestly i just see people getting their power of three like with mm -hmm. like 15 six months mm -hmm. uh, because you get to see what people are going to do if they're going to put those orders in and then if you use it smartly um, and just explain to them. And then, you know, we'll be able to explain to them as well. Um, we can help you get your 50 and blah, 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 blah. But um, because once they're a wellness advocate, of course, you can place underneath them. Yeah. Um, so then just continue to duplicate that down. But I can't wait. I'm so excited for that wholesale customer. Like I thought mm. it was going to be here in June. Anyway, yeah. it's not yet. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, that's what that's what I've talked to my girls about about strategically using it um, to improve their structure. Mm-hmm. And then if you notice that people are down those lower levels, if you've placed them there for rank advancement or whatever, and then you're maintaining rank in those legs, but people are putting 100 PV orders and then you don't necessarily need those 100 PV orders in those legs anymore. Um, and it's your enrolment, you can incentivize them, move them up and put them into a position where you'd need it for your... Um, for your power of three. Again, provided, you know, I don't want anyone going, what about relationships? Provided that, you know, relationships are, ex- are respected and that no one's going to be losing income or rank or anything like that. So mm. taking all of that into consideration, but as long as, you know, people aren't going to be hurt or used or manipulated in the process mm. um, and, that, and that you can do that move um, ethically, then, yeah, that's how we will be doing it. Well, that's how yeah, I definitely. I, I know we've got to wrap up, but I, sorry, I've got one more. You said that you can get your double 1500. So you basically just do this again and duplicate it. Just do it again. Well, it's my double 1500s happened a bit faster for me because remember at the beginning how I had like a thousand people on my front line and I had five elites um, because of the way that I built. So initially when I thought that had completely screwed me up, now it's worked out really well as it always does in the long run um, because now um, I've had builders pop up in those legs and as I've just started to build my sixth leg at the beginning of this year, um, now that she's getting her 250, um, it's filling in for my second 1500. Um, so that's going to be $4,000 a month just on people ordering, which is pretty freaking cool. So mm-hmm. you can't get double 50 and double 250, can you? No, you've got to do your first 1500 first. Right. Once you qualify for that, then you can go, then you start again for your second 50 and your second 250. Cool. So, okay. yeah. So, but also too, to qualify the second time, you've got to be putting in a 200 PV order in your account, not a hundred PV order. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, which for me, like I said, it's so easy. I order so I order so much stuff. Those supplements, they kill us. Yeah, <laughs> no, they kill us in a good way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. awesome. Unless Joanne's got another question, we should wrap it up. <laughs> hey, I'm getting great content out there for everyone by asking these questions because someone at home could be going, "Hold on, she mentioned two fifteen hundreds. What?" Yeah, but I don't. I don't have any more questions. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks again for sharing all your wisdom with us. So, yeah, it's been really appreciative. And uh, I guess if anyone has questions, let us know and we'll ask Rosie. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try and answer them first. <laughs> we're like going, I don't know. We'll ask Rosie. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Perfect. Cool. Thank Thank you very much. much. See ya. Bye.